she was in a state of silent agitation all the way to Woodley. She had evidently never been there before, and although she little dreamt I knew anything of her early story, I could perceive she was in a tremor at the thought of seeing the place which might have been her home, and round which it is probable that many of her innocent girlish imaginations had clustered. It was a long drive there through paved jolting lanes. Miss Matilda sat bolt upright and looked wistfully out of the windows as we drew near the end of her journey. The aspect of the country was quiet and pastoral. Woodley stood among fields, and there's an old-fashioned garden where roses and currant bushes touched each other and where the feathery asparagus formed a pretty background to the pinks and gillyflowers. There's no drive up to the door. We got out at a little gate, walked up a straight box-edged path. My cousin might make a drive, I think, said Miss Pearl, who was afraid of Yarek and had only her cap on. I think it is very pretty said Miss Matty, with a soft plaintiveness in her voice, and almost in a whisper. The just and Mr. Holbrook appeared at the door, rubbing his hands in very effervescence of hospitality. He looked more like my idea of Don Quixote than ever, and yet the likeness was only external. His respectable housekeeper stood modestly at the door to bid us welcome. And while she led the elder ladies upstairs to a bedroom, I begged to look about the garden. My request evidently pleased the old gentleman, who took me all round the place and showed me his six and twenty cars, named after the different letters of the alphabet. As we went along, he surprised me occasionally by repeating apt and beautiful quotations from the pates ranging easily from Shakespeare and George Herbert to days of our own day. He did this as naturally as we were thinking aloud, and the true and beautiful words were the best expression he could find for what he was thinking or feeling. To be sure, he called Baron my Lord Byron, and pronounced the name of Goethe strictly in accordance with the English sound of the letters, as Goethe says, ye ever verdant palaces, etc., Altogether, I never met with a man before or since who had spent so long a life in a secluded and not impressive country, with ever-increasing delight in the daily and yearly change of the season and beauty. When he and I went in, we found the dinner was nearly ready in the kitchen, for so I suppose the room ought to be called, as there were oak dresses and cupboards all round, all over by the side of the fireplace and only a small turkey carpet in the middle of the flag floor. The room might have been easily made into a handsome dark egg dining parlour by removing the oven and a few other appurtenances of a kitchen, which were evidently never used, the real cooking place being at some distance. The room in which we were expected to sit was a stiffly furnished, ugly apartment, but that in which we did sit was what Mr. Holbrook called the counting house, where he paid his labourers their weekly wages at a great desk near the door. The rest of the pretty sitting room, looking into the orchard and all covered over with dancing tree shadows, was filled with books. They lay on the ground, they covered the walls, they strolled the table. He was evidently half ashamed and half proud of his extravagance in this respect. There were of all kinds, poetry and wild weird tales prevailing. He evidently chose his books in accordance with his own tastes, not because such and such were classical or established favourites. <laughs> Thank you.